Folks tell us they can't get enough of our great taste. So now at KFC, we're marinating original recipe chicken through and through for that same great taste in every bite. So get your hands on it right now. Everybody needs a little KFC. My mind is made up. It's the end of the discussion. And don't bother closing the door on your way out. Yeah. You are impossible. Something tells me you haven't seen the last of Herr Chandler. Oh, Adam means well in his own selfish, self-serving way. Listen, if there's anything else I can do to help... No, I mean, knowing that you're going to be at the helm of Tempo, it's, it's a big load off my mind, and I will tell Alice. I'll give her all the instructions. Tell her to keep it. I know the drill. I know you do. If you'll excuse me, ladies, I have a magazine to run. Brooke. I meant when I said to Adam, I think your commitment to the shelter is decent and right. Dixie, I couldn't do this if it weren't for good friends like you and Tad and Edmund. And I really appreciate the fact that you're taking Jamie. It's our pleasure to do it. And Junior can't wait. He's got all these plans. He's building a new fort. They're going to go conquer Venus. He's got mud pies. No, I, I you know, I know he's going to be fine. I just, you know, I can't help feeling guilty. Well, I just think that's, you know, part of the maternal instinct. I remember when I was running my victim's rights campaign, and it was just something that I felt that I had to do. Junior understood, and Jamie will too. Listen, his things are there. Let me get him. Quick. Jamie, honey, it's time to go. Hi, hey, sweetie. Mwah. Listen, um, I've got all your things packed, okay? I've got your clothes, and I've got your favorite toys. I even have Mr. Bear. And I know that you're going to listen to, to Daddy and Dixie the way you always do. Okay? I'm going to miss you. But you know what? I'm going to come see you every day, rain or shine. Will you check me in that night? Sometimes I will, and sometimes uh, Daddy and Dixie will tuck you in. I may not be able to leave the shelter every night, but I'm going to be thinking about you all the time, knowing that you're having sweet dreams. I'll we'll miss you, Mom. I'll miss you, too, honey. But you know what? I have to do this. Because I promised all the grown-ups and the little girls and boys that they can have a safe place to sleep at night and have sweet dreams at the shelter. And I have to... I have to stand by that. You understand that, don't you? You're keeping your promise. That's right. I love you, Mom. I love you, too. Can you be good? Yeah? And I'll see you soon. Okay. okay. Come on, sweetheart. Junior's got a mud pie with your name on it. Okay. Oh, listen. Oh, take care. Good okay, luck. I will. Bye-bye. Huh. Thanks. I ever wake you up just to tell you that I had been clumsy? My goodness, I just spilled some mineral water. I didn't bust the dam on the Susquehanna. You know something, Dimitri? I have enough stress in my life. I really don't need to defend myself to you. I ask you a simple question. You make it sound like I'm impaneling a grand jury. I mean, what aren't you telling me? Nothing, darling. I... Look, I'm sorry that I snapped. It's, it's my back. The pain just keeps me on edge. Anything happens, and I become a bear. Erica, I love you. That's why I worry about you. I know that you mean well. I know that. It's just, it's just the way you hover. How can I say this nicely? You make me want to scream. I, I just want to be close by in case you need me. What I need now is just some breathing room. All right, if, if this pill thing happens again, tell me. I mean, keeping secrets is a surefire way to get me upset. Yeah. Miss Kane, no need to worry. Mr. Martin agreed to fill in for you. Tad? In living color, what does he know about style and glamour? Well, he pulled off the lipstick segment. How? 
I, I don't want to know. <laughs> oh, no, no, I can't wait for that delivery. The show must... Uh... Oh! Honey! How the hell am I supposed to run an interview with somebody I don't even know? I don't George, know anything about it. Good morning, Pine Valley. Yeah? Elise Flynn does it all the time. Riff, wing it, improvise. Stop saying that. Okay. And in three, two, one, you're on. Welcome back. Uh, in case you're uh, tuning in early, I'm Tad Martin. As if you care. Um, I'm filling in for Erica Kane today, who is simply not here. Um, but enough of that. Anyway, my next guest is somebody who needs no introduction. I mean, who, besides me, has never heard of the Princess of Permanent Press? Huh? One of the foremost in fashion, the Duchess of Dresses, ladies and gentlemen, Put it together for Lady Lucille. Yeah! You Darling. look sensational. Please, please. I say, vous ici and I'll sit in the idiot seat. I am just speechless, literally. Well, that sometimes happens with us legends. <laughs> mm. Do you mind if I call you Lucy? I haven't been called that since I was a little girl. Well, wait a minute. That's that's a terrific place to start. Why don't we uh, Why don't we talk about that? Uh, do you mind talking about your childhood? Tell well, me about. Well, I'd rather start with my uh, fall collection. Which one is my camera? Oh, um, yeah, this one. Oh, clothing value for your clothing dollar. No, that's a personal Lady Lucille guarantee. Oh, come on now, Lucy. I mean, isn't it? Doesn't it incredibly? successful and talented person like yourself get tired of answering the same questions over and over you know about hemlines and, 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 and shoulder pads oh i'm glad you mentioned that you see my designs have detachable shoulder pads for that optional softer look doubtless a stroke of genius <laughs> anyway why don't we get back to, to what got you uh, uh, started what what inspired you to create well, I suppose it goes back to my childhood. Um, I love to play with paper dolls, but they seem so mm, unfinished without clothes. Interesting word. So you mean that you actually, you would make clothes for your paper doll? That's right. Well, you might say you cut and pasted your way into a veritable empire. Well, uh, I suppose so. <laughs> Would you do me a, a tremendous favor? Would you honor me? Would you honor us by, by demonstrating your technique? Well, I don't think people want to see me play with scissors. Oh, contrary, your fashionist. I, for one, would love to see a legend make magic. Come on, please, 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 please. Well, all right. I love it. All right, James, get this genius some scissor and papers. Chop, chop, let's go. Good you are you. charming. Thank you. <laughs> Back. Julia. How's your nap? I had this dream. It was just like your grandmother said. Lights. An angel. The most warm, beautiful light. I wanted to go to it. But the angel said it wasn't time. Soon, they said. They said that It'll be all right. And that there's nothing to be afraid of. Oh, it's true. I'm not afraid anymore. The best part is I can see again. I can see the light. It all makes sense now. What does? The words to the song that I learned in Sunday school. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. There will be no more pain. No more tears. Just peace and light. Forever. Sounds beautiful. 
Don't cry, Julia. Be happy for me. I'm going to be with the angels. What's wrong? I mean, it's really easy to see where you've gotten where you've gotten. Who knew you could have so much fun with a little colored paper and scissors? <laughs> this is, is this lady a good sport or what? I haven't had this much fun since Reagan was president. <laughs> oh. What's this? Oh, oh, I have something special for you. Okay. This is a Lady Lucille exclusive. Just take her hand. Ooh, Mr. Music Drumroll, please. <laughs> Forget fashion. I'm going to, into uh, origami. Lady Lucy. <laughs> Lucy. Uh, thank you so much for letting America see a genius at work. Oh, thank you. <laughs> That's about all the time we have uh, uh, for the cutting edge with, or in this case, without Bye. Erica Kane. Bye. Cut. Yay, Daddy. At least I will give you a statement after I have settled in. How do you answer protesters' charges that the shelter is unsafe, unsanitary, and it should be shut down? I will give you a statement. Take that microphone out of her face before I shove it where it belongs. I take it you support your ex-wife's grandstanding? Uh, yes, Miss English understands the problems in the shelter and intends to correct them, and I support her, yes, I do. Well, what, what about the homeowners who would like a safe, clean neighborhood to live in? Edith Nelson, you're an elitist prig. Adam, please. Look, the shelter has a responsibility both to the residents and to the community. Now, obviously, there have been problems. That is why I am here. I am moving in to the shelter to manage it temporarily so I can see firsthand what the problems are so I can fix them. I am taking a leave of absence from Temple Magazine. Edmund Gray will be the interim editor until I feel that the shelter has been brought up to par. You are grandstanding. You know what? You and your supporters are very quick to rush to judgment. Rush? We made our concerns known oh, months ago, and we were totally ignored. Peaceful protest is our only recourse. Now, where, where is she? We are sending a petition to the mayor to have this chamber of horrors shut down. Why don't you give me a chance to fix what's wrong? Because Enid Nelson and her friends don't want the shelter here, period. That is not true. Well, I am here. I'm going to be working in conjunction with the current director, Miss O'Hare, and we're going to address things as we go along. No, you won't. I quit. Miss O'Hare, I thought that we had an understanding. You think you can waltz in here, snap your manicured fingers, and whip this place into shape? Good luck. I've been here three years doing the best I could with no help from you. Then you're named Woman of the Year, so suddenly, poof, you're a caring crusader. Look, Miss O'Hare, you never told me that there was anything wrong here. You never asked. I appreciate your frustration, but I'm telling you that things are going to get better, and I promise you that. Yeah. For me, they will. Miss O'Hare, please, e wait. The director here found the conditions intolerable. Seems your little publicity stunt has backfired. This is not a stunt. <laughs> A disaster is more like it. What now, Miss English? Will you stick it out to prove you're not a dilettante or answer the call of the community and shut the doors of this shelter? 